What's going on guys? This is Dan Watson from learningcameras.com and this is going to be a part of a multi-part series on how to shoot video uh, using a lot of these DSLR or mirrorless type cameras. So there's a ton of them coming on the market right now. This is the Canon 70D right here. It's a great one to use for video. Um, also the GH4, the Sony a7S. There's just so many of these cameras out here that are shooting unbelievable video for a fraction of the cost that we used to see. So um, let's take a look at some of these features, uh, take a look at some of the abilities in this multi-part series and get you out of auto mode and shooting uh, very nice video, not on manual, but knowing exactly what you're doing on that. So to begin, we're gonna look at the shutter speed. Now the shutter speed, also called shutter angle, although we'll refer to it for shutter speed for these because that's what they refer to on still cameras like that. So um, the shutter speed is gonna be very important for video because it actually alters the overall look of your video. And uh, here's what you're gonna be doing with that. You need to understand a little bit about your frame rate, uh, what you're recording on. Are you recording on 24 frames a second, 30 frames a second, 60 frames a second? Those are the general ones that we see here in the USA. Uh, if you're outside of that, you might see 25 uh, frames a second. So I shoot most of my video at a 24 frame per second frame rate. And the reason is because when I export that to YouTube or if I'm shooting a wedding or something like that, that is my final. So I will shoot sometimes faster than that if we're shooting uh, slow motion or something like that. But uh, for general footage, most of it's gonna be either at 24 or sometimes at 30. Uh, here's why that's gonna be important because ideally you want your shutter speed to be close to right around double whatever you're recording on. So if you're recording at 24 frames a second, somewhere around a 50th of a second, double the 24, uh, the closest we can get is right around that 50th mark. You can also go to a 40th of a second would be fine. You can go down as far as uh, equal to your, your rate. So if I'm shooting at 30 frames a second, I could pull off 30, uh, shooting at a shutter speed of 1 30th of a second and it won't look too bad. And uh, here's why we're gonna go for that goal of double whatever our frame rate is. If you go too high on that number and you begin to shoot faster shutter speeds, so let's say 1 20th of a, 120th of a second, uh, even though our recording is at a 30th, uh, 30 frames per second on a frame rate, you're gonna start to see very jagged motion. The motion is not gonna be very smooth. What's happening is that shutter is opening and closing so fast that you're gonna begin to see some stutter. Now, sometimes you want a little bit of that. They use that in some films, like uh, you know, like 300 or something like that. So it, it kind of gives you a different look to your video, not a smooth open motion, very high paced, uh, it kind of looks a little bit jittery. Anytime you go over about double of the frame rate that you're shooting on, you're gonna begin to see that. So if we're shooting at a 30th of a second, we're gonna to begin to see that at about a six, if we're shooting at 30 frames a second, we're gonna to begin to shoot to see that at a 60th of a second or higher. Uh, the highest I would ever go is probably four times the overall frame rate because after that it's just gonna to begin to get so much, uh, you're gonna get so much jitter that the, the overall look is not gonna be what we're looking for. So now that we've established a range of say somewhere between equal to our frame rate and four times our frame rate with our ideal being close to around double the frame rate, I, I tend to go a little under most of the time rather than over. So it gives me a little smoother video for most of the stuff that I'm shooting, which is like weddings and things like that. So if I'm shooting at 24 frames a second, double is a 50, I would prefer to shoot at uh, 140th on my shutter speed than say 160th, which would be a little bit more than double. So that's my preference. Your mileage will vary, but uh, you know, you're not gonna see that big of a difference until you start going way over that. So now we've kind of established that range that we need to be shooting in between uh, one and the other, and we have our ideal of what shutter speed we're gonna aim for. Now something else to know about the shutter, the faster that shutter is firing, the less light is reaching our image sensor inside of our camera. And that means that we're gonna get less light in the overall picture. So if I want my picture to be brighter, I'm gonna to wanna to shoot it at a higher, range, a higher shutter speed, like let's say a 30th of a second. And if I want my scene darker, I might bring that down to say one over 1 20th of a second. So 120th of a second on my shutter speed. 
So I can, I can have a little bit of leeway in the overall exposure of my scene using the shutter, knowing that I don't want to go too high and I also don't want to go too low. Now these cameras are actually limited, so I can't go over a 30th of a second. So I can't shoot at like a 10th of a second or a 5th of a second on this camera in manual mode on video. It won't let me. It stops me at a 30th of a second, which is good because I really don't want to shoot anything um, more than that. And then I can go up to whatever I need. So I can shoot this at a 4,000th of a second if I wanted to. And uh, that would not be ideal, but you can do that. That's why you need to learn your limits on your shutter speed and what will be good to film at and what will not be good to film at. So now I know I can alter my exposure using that shutter speed. Now the frame rate is uh, gonna differ a little bit depending on what you're shooting at. So if you're shooting at a 24 frames a second, you might be shooting at say a 40th or a 50th of a second. And if I'm shooting at a 30th of a second frame rate or 30 frames per second, then I might shoot at uh, you know, 1 50th or 1 60th of a second on my shutter speed. Now, if we're gonna be shooting slow motion, this is another thing. Uh, I'm gonna be shooting at a higher frame rate and we'll go over uh, slow motion a little bit. So if you don't get this I, exactly, we're gonna actually demonstrate and show you slow motion exactly how it happens and how we uh, bring it into our editing software and make it look like slow motion. But uh, here's the basics. You're gonna wanna record at a higher frame rate than what your overall project is. So if my project is gonna be at 24 frames a second and I shoot my video at a 60th of a second or 60 frames per second, then when I bring it into my project, it's gonna extend my 60 frames a second to match the 24 frames a second. And that's what's gonna give us our slow motion. So it's gonna play at less than half speed. So we're gonna get our slow motion from that. Now, if I'm shooting at a 60th of a second, or 60 frames per second, I need to know that my shutter is gonna be almost double that because now I'm shooting at 60 frames per second instead of 24, so my shutter speed needs to be closer to 120, uh, uh, 120th of a second rather than you know the normal 60th or 50th of a second I'd be using for my overall project. So that's what we need to know for that. So those are kind of the basics with shutter speed, knowing what we need to shoot at, uh, ideally, most of my shots are going to be between a 30th of a second on my shutter and 120th of a second shutter. Rarely ever would I need to go over that. And then, like I said, my ideal is somewhere around that 40th of a second, 50th of a second mark. And that's for shooting at my timeline, which is 24 frames per second. If you shoot at 30 frames per second more, then I would go for about a 50th of a second to a 60th of a second for my shutter speed. And that'll give you a nice overall look on your video. Uh, it won't be too jittery, nice smooth motion. If you ever see people that take their cameras outside and they have a big stutter motion, that's because they've got it on auto mode, most likely or they're recording on too high of a shutter speed. And, um, and that's what's giving them that jittery. Now, here's gonna be the issue, is if you take this camera into outside, you're gonna notice that if you put this at a 50th of a second, no matter what your aperture is on, no matter what your ISO is on, you can bring it down ISO 100, it won't matter, it's gonna be bright because the exposure outside is generally too bright, especially in sunlight or daylight um, for that. So we're gonna go over some tricks and little tips to bring your exposure down in camera other than using the camera settings, there's things we can buy for the camera that aren't too much money that will allow us to do that. So we're gonna go over all of that and take you from really shooting on auto or not knowing what you're doing on the video side of things to knowing really well what you're going for on that. So that's the basics and subscribe and stay tuned as we begin the rest of this series.